So, hey there, I'm Greg, the respiratory therapist here at uh, Rockingham County. And we are replacing masks that are on your crash carts. And we want you to be familiar with the new mask that we're putting on there. It's called the Oxy Mask, O-X-Y-M-A-S-K. And you look at it and you say, hey, how does that work? That's not a mask, it's all wide open in there, right? Well, if you look at, and I don't know if you're gonna get this very well, but that's your simple oxygen mask. And look where the oxygen's blowing. It's blowing right up here, right up where your nose is or above your nose, the bridge of your nose, and I don't breathe air, you probably don't either. So this company has realized, let's bring it in at a right angle, and then we'll have a raised area in here with this little button right in the center, and that creates what they call a vortex of oxygen. So the oxygen swirls around right in this area here, right in front of the patient's mouth and nose where they need it. How um, great is that? Perfect, right? So now this, particular mask, if you're interested in FiO2s, there's a little tag on it that will tell you what, what liter flow, uh, what FiO2 you're, you're getting. I don't really care about FiO2s. I care about how the patient is satting. So when you use this mask, put it on, um, titrate your liter flow to keep the patient sats between um, 88 and 95. Um, Things to remember if you are using this simple oxygen mask, you need to run this at at least five to six liters per minute. Reason being is when you inhale, you get oxygen. When you exhale, you exhale CO2. You need enough flow in this mask to flush out that CO2 before you start rebreathing it. I don't have to remember that with this one because it is so wide open, we don't have CO2 buildup. How nice is that, right? The non-rebreather, and this has been a staple of emergency oxygen delivery for years, but I'm gonna tell you something. Right out of the package, there's always a one-way flap that's missing. You'll notice there's a one-way flap here, and then there's a one-way flap there. The, how this really works is you put your oxygen in, you turn it on, before you put it on the patient, inflate the bag, make sure the mask gets tight on the face because it won't work right if it's not tight on the face. When the patient takes a breath in, that one-way flap opens, these close so that the patient gets the oxygen from the bag. When they exhale, this one closes to keep what they exhale from going back into the bag, and these open so that the patient can exhale. Now, again, there's always one of those flaps missing. Reason being, safety. If your oxygen cylinder runs empty and you had two one-way flaps here, the patient wouldn't be able to get air from anywhere. So by pulling that off, to me, it just makes it uh, seem as if the, uh, it's not designed per, to work the way it was intended. Anyway, you know, I hope you never have to use one of those. We're getting rid of them anyway. Also on your crash cart, which I'm not sure why, you have aerosol masks. Now, a couple of things I want to teach you about the aerosol mask. Um, generally, we use these when we're administering nebulizers. Um, you know, those nebs that produce a mist. And anytime you can have a patient use a nebulizer with a mouthpiece, you should do it. It gives a better treatment. If they have a mask on and they're breathing in and out through their nose, a lot of that medication is gonna rain out in their sinuses, not where it needs to go. It needs to go down into their lungs. So um, using this though, you wanna make sure that this is tight against the nose like our masks are these days. Reason being is if it's loose, and again, that medication's being blown up this way, some of it may leak out and get right into their eyes and create a conjunctivitis, which is not a good thing. So I believe here at Rockingham, we're gonna switch those to uh, the same manufacturer that makes this, has come up with an aerosol mask that brings it in at a right angle and puts it right in front of the patient's mouth where they're gonna breathe it. Uh, the other thing that it does is there are two um, uh, exhalation holes here on this mask, on the, on the oxy mask version, the hole is right down here. So then when they exhale, it gets forced down instead of being forced up into the eyes. So that I believe is a crash course on oxygen masks. Again, I'm Greg, the respiratory therapist. I'm here every Wednesday here at Rockingham County. If you have a question and you see me, please stop and, and ask it.